Genesis 11, 1 through 9. The Creator Man. Now that's facetious. We focus on the Tower in this passage. Usually the Tower of Babel. The Tower was not evil. It was not the Tower, but the hearts of the people were determined to make themselves God over their own lives. Nimrod, a descendant of Ham, was an empire builder. In Genesis chapter 10, many believe that Nimrod was the leader of this effort to build this city. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord, wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord, and the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, and Erech, and Akkad, and Kelna, and the land of Shinar. Out of that land went forth Asher, and buildeth Nineveh, and the city Rehoboth, and Kalah, and Rezin between Nineveh and Kalah. The same is a great city. Nimrod was an empire builder. Babylon was the nation, you know, that captured Israel in 597 B.C., where Babylon, where Babel was located. Uh, you know, they held uh, Israel captive for 70 years. Today, mankind is seeking to build Babel again. Well, the, uh, they're already building it. And, and Babylon comes back in the book of Revelation. There's a spiritual Babylon and a physical Babylon coming and may already be here. There's a spiritual Babylon. Babylon represents man always wanting to create his own utopia. Man wants to unify under their own name and their own purposes and leave God completely out. Babylon wants to leave God completely out, the spirit of Babylon. First of all, let's look at the plan of man, Genesis 11, 1. And the whole earth was of one language and one speech. At first, the people of the whole world had only one language and used the same words, the same dialect. Since the flood, no one his family spoke the same language. It's not evil to have a common language. There will be only one language in heaven, according to Genesis chapter 5. These people were unified in communication. So, and you know, that's very important to have, to be able to communicate. Today, we have unity and communication through the internet, don't we? So there is this unity is already coming where we speak the same language. It's called computer language, isn't it? It's already coming back. But communication is very important to build a strong society and economy. It could have drawn them all together and worshiped to God and praised Him. These people at Babel could have come together with this common language to worship God and praise Him. But no, they perverted God's gift of language as man always perverts God's gifts to us. Mankind always perverts God's good gifts to us. Verse 2, 11 of Gen chapter 11 of Genesis, And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. As they wandered about, they found a place in the east, called Shinar in the region of Babylonia and settled there. Now the whole earth spoke one language and used the same words, vocabulary. And as people journeyed eastward, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and that's where they chose to settle. That's where they chose to settle. The land of Shinar is, region, is the region of ancient Babylon and Mesopotamia today. Genesis 10.10 10, And the beginning of his kingdom was Babylon, Erech, and Akkad, and Kalnan, Kalni, and the land of Shinar. The land of Shinar. Shinar was part of modern Iraq. This is one region traditionally suggested as the location of the Garden of Eden. The peoples of the earth came there from the east. Evidently, Noah's descendants pulled up their tents. That's what journeyed means. It means they pulled up their tents. They were situated in one place. They decided to journey. And they built a city. The east always represents the multiple gods of Hinduism and Asian regions and cultures that includes the largest populated nations in the world, China and India. That's what we say the east, eastern religions, it's the religions of India usually and China has influenced people greatly. They're the two largest populated nations in the world. Over 2 billion of 8 billion population of the world almost live in China and India. Great influence on the world today, uh, even today. And this is that east 
They went to the east. People look to the east for answers today. Look to the east. China is supposed to have all the answers. You know, the United Nations wants to build a world based on the economic uh, law and rule and, and practices of China. China? They were booming economically to all the... China's been hit with like nine or ten great disasters. You know, that big dam they have there, the world's largest dam, it, can, it affects 50 million people, or 150 million people, something like that, is about to go under, and uh, they just had all kinds of problems. Wonder why. Maybe God's trying to get their attention. There's more Christians in China, they think, than in the United States. Maybe they're praying that God would bring down that regime. We need to pray for the Christians of China. China, are they're good people. It's the Chinese Communist Party that's wicked. So they settled in Shinar in disobedience to God. God told them to be fruitful and multiply after they got off the ark. He told Noah, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth, Genesis 9-1. They were to go throughout the earth, but they liked Shinar. And they decided against God's decree. And they settled there. They were listening to their own voice instead of the voice of God. They did what they wanted to do. What they thought was right. The Bible says there's a way... The man that leads, that they think's right, but the end thereof is death. Verse 3, And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick, and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime they had for mortar. They said to one another, Come, one another, Come on, let's make some bricks and bake them hard. So they had bricks to build with and tar to hold them together. They said, Let us make bricks and fire them through a kiln to harden and strengthen them. This is a lot of work. They used brick for stone as building material and they used tar, bitumen, asphalt for mortar, which they had to make all these things from scratch. The use of bricks for building a large structure was common in this early period. The use of huge quarried stones weighing many tons came later. The immense building blocks of later times were dressed so well they could be fitted together without mortar. These people had to use stone I had to make find material to make bricks to bake them and make their own mortar. This was hard work back then. If you said, well, you, I'm going to build me a brick house, you've got to make your own bricks and make your own mortar, you'd be building a wood house real fast, wouldn't you? They had to make bricks in place of stone. They didn't have the materials at Shinar for mortar. So they used a tar type of material. This was their own making. This is symbolizing they made this themselves. They did not go where God wanted them to go. They decided we're going to make it ourselves. We're going to do it ourselves. We'll use our wisdom. They were making their own place and not God's. These people knew that it would be difficult to build in the area that lacked some of the natural resources for building, but they were determined. Got to give them credit. They were determined. They would stop at nothing to make their city their utopia, their life without God. Does that remind you of anybody today? They'll stop at nothing to make their utopia without God. That's America today and the world today. The... the United Nations and all these people trying to make a one world government. They're going to stop at nothing. No stone unturned. No nothing. Black Lives Matter has $150 million in funding. More than they'll ever need. Who's funding them? Hmm. People that want a world without God. A utopia. They're trying to build their own utopia. They'll stop at nothing. As these people did. Shinar is a land filled with many evil spirits. And some who have been to that area say it is a demon. It's demon central. And evidently will come back to prominence during the tribulation period. No wonder it's such a prominent place. It's like it's a, a dwelling place for demons. Because there's such wickedness there. There's a feeling there, people say, when they visit the area. Oppressive. 
Verse 4, they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. They knew the Scriptures. They knew God wanted them to be scattered and go other places and replenish the earth. People today know the Bible, but they still want to make a name for themselves and ignore the Word of God. Let us go to build us a city and a tower. No prayer here. No reaching out to God. God wants us to let us stay here. No compromise. We're going to do what we want to do. We don't care who it hurts. Who we have to shut down. Churches, restaurants, whatever, schools, we don't care. We're going to get our utopia at any cost. And your life means nothing. They said, let us build a city which, with a tower that reaches to the sky so we can make a name for ourselves. We don't want to be scattered all over the earth. Listen, they wanted a famous name for themselves. Their plans are spelled out. This is obviously. You can find out the plans of the One World Order by going to the UN website, the Black Lives Matter website. They spell it out. They're not hiding it anymore. It's right there. Agenda 2030, United Nations. 17 plans. They've got one of the most developed websites I've ever seen. It's a big circle. And you click on the every link works perfectly and tells you their plans. Black Lives Matter has a plan. It's Marxist and anarchy. They have a plan to down America. Yet we fund them. Michael Jordan gave them $100 million. You think he's going to have $100 million in a Marxist communist economy? These people would stop it. They made the plans right out there. No hiding it. The plans are spelled out. They didn't want to be scattered. They knew that God wanted them to replenish the earth and build other areas. They disobeyed God completely. They were only interested in their plans for their utopian society. Arrogance, rebellion, pride are the root of mankind's activities here. They could not believe that separating would lead to security and success. They thought that they were secure and they would have great success with each other working together. That's the best thing. Let us stay here and all work together in unity. Don't own your own land. Let's all stick together. God never intended for man to make heaven on earth. He knew the hearts of men. They cannot live together in harmony and unity. They're sinful, selfish, arrogant, but brilliant. <laughs> This building will be a symbol of the power, unity, and greatness of man. The plan of man. Secondly, God's plan. Verse 5. And the Lord came down to see the, city, see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. It's an odd passage. The Lord came down to look at it. Check it out. Genesis 18.21, God came down again. I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to, my, to the cry of it, which is coming to me. If I, and if not, I will know. <laughs> God checked them out. God already knew what man was doing. He knows everything. He didn't go down to find them out. He went down to straighten them out. He didn't go down to find them out. He went down to straighten them out. It's interesting to me that God was right there in the midst of them. And I wonder if they even noticed God's presence. God dwells in the middle of the United States with the church and the Holy Spirit. And they don't even care. They don't take notice. This great building project was of little significance to God. It was like He just wanted to see this little building project of man. Like a father watching his son put together a paper airplane. A plane. It was so insignificant to God that God had to come down and see it from heaven. He couldn't see it from heaven. Our plans and our great cities are nothing to God compared to His greatness and power and majesty. Yet we think we're doing something, don't we? 
We think we're really doing something. Verse 6, And the Lord said, Behold, this people is one. They have one, all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing shall be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Isn't it interesting? Uh, verse 6, Behold, the people is one. They all have one language. That is the goal of the elitists and the world, uh, one world government people, the United Nations. This is their goal. The people is, we want to be one with one language. That's their goal. God didn't want that. Why not? The Bible says, Now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Nothing that they propose. The potential is that humankind will become as willfully sinful as they were before the flood. God would not allow that to happen again. God apprises the situation. This was not a threat to God at all, but it was in violation of His command to disperse and fill the earth. It was about what effect this city would have on man in the future. If they could build this city despite all the obstacles, they could do anything they put their mind to. This was a hard job. That's a rough area. Why they want to settle in the land of Shinar? I think because it's demon central, for one thing. There's something about that area where God, uh, at the Adam, God dispersed people from the Garden of Eden. There's something about that area that the demons love because that's where God built a utopia and they are taking it over, the demons. God built the garden there, supposedly. Uh, and maybe that's why there's such demon activity in that area. They don't want, they make sure God doesn't build it back, I guess. They've taken it over. Now that's just my conjecture. God apprises the situation. Arrogance, self righteousness will follow. If man succeeds in building a city and a tower, a great tower, a monument to mankind, what else will they do? God made man with a great mind, even in a fallen state. Man is brilliant. But that is because we came from God. Not because we are independent from God, but we came from God. We can solve any problem, it seems, given enough time. But we cannot solve our greatest problem. We are sinners in need of a Savior. Man cannot, nor will he ever be able to save himself from sin. Verse 7, Go to, let us go down. And therefore, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. Let us, is that the Trinity? Let us go down and mix up their language so they will not understand each other. Come, let us, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go down there and confuse and mix up their language so they will not understand one another's speech. The us in this passage is similar to the language of Genesis 1.26. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. The plural pronoun emphasizes the majesty of the speaker. The variation in language, culture, and values, and clans all started at this point right here. This is where all language, cultures, values, and clans started at this moment. Were it not for human arrogance, this division would not have been necessary. One day peoples of all languages and cultures will unite to celebrate the grace of God's risen Son, lifting up their voices together in praise of the Lamb. Revelation 5, 11 and 12. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders. <clears throat> and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. All the voices sang the same thing. Thing. So one day we will have one common language, a heavenly language. You know, this was not a punishment for these people of Shinar and Babel as much as it was a preventative measure. Man cannot be one. They'll be one big spiritual mess. Man needs God. Man thinks he does only need himself. Man thinks he does not need God. It's not about building a great society and going to hell. It's about being saved from our sin and building our lives according to, the God, to God's will and purpose. We can build great things on this planet. We have built great things, great skyscrapers and incredible things. And we're building ourselves a paving the road to hell, aren't we? Is all we're doing. Man cannot build a world. We're too selfish and seek power and glory for ourselves. Our dreams most often include, listen, when you dream of something, when you make a, when you dream, I want to do this one day. I, this is my dream. It's usually for your glory, right? Do we ever dream something and say, I want to do this for the glory of God? 
That's what the voice and all these shows are about. I want to I want to be a star. I want the glory. That's a problem. God puts us places as Christians sometimes in these positions where people know us and we're famous, but that's only to bring glory to His name. We should bring glory to His name in everything He gives us. That's a great stage. God made nation states so that one person can't be the world ruler. God made nation states for checks and balances on each other. It's the best way for sinful fallen man to live in this world is to have nation states. Well, there are 220 some nations in the world. That's a lot of nations. The United Nations wants to drop all borders, make everybody one. The plan of man. Secondly, God's plans. Thirdly, God acts. So, verse 8, So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. That ended that. <laughs> Real fast. The Lord scattered them all over the earth. They stopped building the city, so the Lord scattered them. What else could they do? They were so confused, they quit their great building project. They could no longer communicate. That's one thing we fear in America, is a power outage, isn't it? The power goes out. We can't communicate. We actually have to talk to people. That's frightening, isn't it? That's one of the great marvels of the 20th and 21st centuries is our communication. It's instantaneous. When God brings judgment, our plans are always disrupted. Do you know that? When God brings judgment on a nation or on us as individuals, our plans are always disrupted. Whether it's a disaster, a war, or a disease, we suddenly only think of one or two things. Survival or repentance. <laughs> I wish our nation thought of repentance. Either way, our lives are changed. Verse 9, Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of the earth. It used to be called the land of Shinar. Now it's called Babel. From thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Well, you can either do it the easy way, go yourself and scatter throughout the world, or I'll send you. How many of you think it's a good thing when God sends you? I mean, how did it work out? How was uh, Jonah's trip? He could have gone to Nineveh and walked there. Instead, he went in the belly of a fish. God made sure he went to Nineveh. You either go the easy way, God's way, or your way, and eventually God will get you where He wants you to be. But it may not be a, a pleasant journey. The verb for confused sounds similar to the name of the city. The principal city of ancient paganism, Babylon, is merely a site of confusion because it's where the Lord confused the language. Babel and Babylon serves as a name and symbol in the Bible for activities directed against God by the nations of the earth. Revelation 17. Babylon will come back during the tribulation. There will be a physical city called Babylon. I don't know if it's a rebuilt Iraq, a city in Iraq, or if it's the United States, or just the world economy. I don't know. There will be a spiritual Babylon. There will be a physical Babylon. The spirit of Babylon is alive today. It's still alive. This spirit of, I'm going to do it my way, I'm going to do it my way or the highway. Well, they got the highway. They got sent and scattered. That's the thing. Shinar was a land that meant, and the tower, man's glory is what we're after. The glory of man. God destroyed it by just simply confounding their language. And that's the thing going on, still going on today. Confusion! We're confused today. Babylon stands for the confusion in the world today. What is gender? They don't know their gender. What do we do about the virus? Who's telling us the truth? Confusion reigns supreme today, and that's what the enemy loves. That's what he loved about Babel and Babylon is the confusion that has been ever since. Because we still don't trust in God who has His truth, His Word, Thy Word is truth. There's no confusion in the Word of God. None. It is the truth of God laid out. It's not going to change. We know where we stand with God if we read the Bible. But there's so much confusion in the world today. People don't know where to turn. They're scared. They're frightened. If we're confused, then we don't know God. Now, there's things that confuse us, like directions and things like that. I'm talking about spiritual confusion. I'm talking about confusion about what's going to happen in the future. 
God has laid it all out for us. We, the church, know exactly what's going to happen. Because God has told us in His Word, He's laid it out step by step. Confusing men is what Satan wants to do so they'll not seek the truth of God. That never changes. Instead, they want to seek after man's laws and rules and, and ways of life that change all the time. If we don't know what gender we are, we're in bad shape. Who would trust anybody that doesn't know what gender they are? And, fellas, if you're going to be a woman, at least try to be pretty. That guy in Pennsylvania, the Attorney General, whatever he is, that got on there and talked about the virus, whoo, that said gender transition back 20 years, I hope. Let's put him as the poster boy for, for transgenderism. That'll stop a lot of them. Whoo. The plan of man, God's plan, God acts. Creator man, that doesn't go, isn't going to fly with God. Man can't create anything. We think we can. We think we're so smart. The Bible says there's none good but one, and that is God. There is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned. What are God's standards? The Ten Commandments. Have you ever told a lie? Have you ever stolen something, no matter how small? Have you always, every minute of every day, loved God with all your heart? The Bible says in James 2.10, Whosoever shall keep the whole law, yet offend in one point, he's guilty of all. Sorry, going to God's Word, you are a sinner. You are going to hell if you die today. But it doesn't have to be that way. Put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Trust in Him as your Savior. It's very simple. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Believe means trust, cling to, rely upon the Lord Jesus Christ for, Christ for salvation. It's not an intellectual, intellectual belief. It's a belief of the heart. Jesus, I need you. I want to trust in you. I changed my mind about the way I was living. I changed my mind that the way I thought you get to heaven. I believe what you say in your word, that it's through Jesus Christ and Him alone. That's how you'll find heaven. These are treacherous, perilous times. The Bible talked about perilous times. We're in them. We're right smack dab in the middle of them. People ask me all the time, what do you think about this, Jack? And I tell them exactly what the Bible says. It doesn't matter what I think. It's what the Bible says. Things are coming to pass. We are on a roller coaster going downhill with no brakes. My dad had a wreck. That's how I got this scar. We went down to Spicy Mountain coming from Paintsville to Tomahawk with a load of groceries. Or a water heater. I think that's what it was. I'll never forget that water heater. I never liked water heater since. <laughs> we came down. Spicy Mountain and his brakes went out on his old army jeep. Brakes went out. And I'm like six years old. I didn't know what was going on, but it sure was a fun ride, I'm telling you. <laughs> didn't have a very good inning. He ran into a tree. He said, hey, go over the hill or hit this tree. He chose the tree. Listen. Jesus died on the tree, the cross, for our sins. Trust in Him. Put your faith and trust in Jesus and do it today. There is no escape from God. You can build a tower to heaven. You can make all your plans and schemes. You can leave God out. Well, we'll just leave God out of everything and He'll eventually go away. You may think He's gone. You may think you've solved the God problem. But let me tell you, in the book of Revelation, He comes back with a vengeance. The wrath of God. God never went anywhere. He didn't have to come back. He is just waiting for that last person to repent. This is how important it is for people to be saved. He is waiting for that last person. Maybe today the last person will come to Jesus Christ in faith and then He's going to say, Church, come up. Come on up. It's time. Go get your church. Son, go get your church. Go get your bride. Bring her home. It's time. 
we are the most blessed of all generations, I think, that we get to live during a time of great anticipation that Jesus is going to come for His church. I've been a Christian 50 years today, or yesterday. 50 years. I've been a Christian longer than anybody in this room. By far, probably. And I am as excited today about my faith in Christ and Jesus coming to get us that I've ever been in my life. Got a chance to witness to people that I've never had a chance to witness to. Doors are opening to people. Uh, two college professors the other night. I mean, it's amazing what God is doing. A table full of uh, high-ranking people in a certain community and got to talk to them. It's amazing what God is doing and the questions people are answering. Be ready to give an answer. Because people are going to be questioning you. Just point them to Jesus. Just give them John 3.16. That tells it all, doesn't it? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish. People know that people are perishing today of either of a disease or war or riots or whatever's going to happen, civil war. They don't know what's going to happen, but they know people are going to perish. Well, this is talking about perishing for eternity. Shall not perish, but have everlasting life. <laughs> everlasting life. Quality of life. Not plucking a harp. Some of you in here can't even play a harp. <laughs> You'd be in big trouble, wouldn't you? I'd hate to hear what I'd play on a harp. It's about everlasting quality of life. Quantity and quality. We'll have it all in Christ Jesus. As Urban read in Sunday school, I have not seen, hear, and not heard the things that God has prepared for those that love Him. Colors we've never imagined. Trees we've never imagined. River that flows from the... Can you imagine that river that flows from the throne of God? What kind of river is that? We've seen some beautiful waterways, but can you imagine the tree of life? What will that look like? But you can just say, well, I'll just try to live my life, do the best I can, just hope everything works out. It will not work out. Right. Unless you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, it'll never work out for you. You may have some good days. God blesses the just and the unjust with rain and good days and bad days. That's just life. That's all you're going to get. Wouldn't you like to live eternally with Jesus Christ? Church, be ready. Tell people. Be ready to share the gospel because people are asking questions. Just get out there. Well, Jack, you got to wear a mask. I know. The devil wants to hide you know, the face of man is one of the parts of the glory of God is the face of a human. It's so odd to, that you smile at somebody. It, it's no use anymore. Why smile? I, don't, I went through Walmart a couple days ago. I didn't smile at anybody. Didn't matter. Had a mask on. <laughs> People smile at me. I couldn't tell. Everybody had a mask on. I don't know who's smiling at you. Who's scowling at you? I think it's great. <laughs> You don't have to be nice to anybody anymore. You can I stuck my tongue out all day at people. Nobody got mad. I mean, this is ridiculous. You say the eyes are the window of the soul. You can see a lot of sadness in people's eyes and confusion and sorrow. We need Jesus Christ more than we ever needed. We've always needed Him, but now more than ever do we need this message. And it's up to us, church. We're the church. Give them Jesus. Amen. Let's pray.